So Donald Trump's in the news and it's mostly been bad news for him. Let's talk about in today's video. Hi, I'm Mike Greiner. I'm a lifelong Democratic activist who's concerned about the direction our country is taking. If you share my concerns, maybe you could like this video and subscribe to this channel, even click that little bell that will notify you when I post something new. So Trump endured a slew of negative headlines last week. I mean, it nearly reminded me of back when he was president. In one of his more innocuous and less surprising moves, he basically took the opportunity of Colin Powell's death to complain about the fake news media rather than wishing General Powell's family his best. ProPublica also did an investigation that revealed that the $6 billion federal program created to provide fresh produce to families affected by the pandemic was mismanaged in a way that benefited Donald Trump and his family. Another big surprise there. But the more relevant news has to do with a number of legal actions impacting him. The first one involved the first time President Trump had to sit for a deposition since he ran for president. He sat for four and a half hours being questioned by the plaintiff's attorneys in a lawsuit stemming to a 2015 incident in which some of his bodyguards attacked protesters. The protesters, outraged over Donald Trump's statements when he announced his race for president, attacking Mexican immigrants held signs saying, make America racist again. And in response, apparently, Donald Trump sent out his bodyguards to beat up the people and take away their signs. At least that's the allegation in the lawsuit. Trump, of course, calls the lawsuit baseless, and they're litigating it, not surprisingly. And it's not clear whether any of this testimony will ever become public. But one thing is true, is it forced an incorrigible liar to sit and answer questions under oath something I'm sure he didn't enjoy very much. And we also have to remember that if he lied, that could ultimately lead to criminal and civil penalties, much the way they did to Bill Clinton when Bill Clinton lied during a deposition. The second piece of bad legal news for Donald Trump involves the opening of a new criminal inquiry in Westchester County, New York, where one of Donald Trump's golf courses is located. Apparently, the county district attorney, Mimi Rocha, has evidence suggesting that Donald Trump had lied about the value of the property there in an effort to reduce his property taxes. So this new criminal investigation is on top of the one that's already occurring in Manhattan that has resulted in an indictment both of the Trump organization as well as Alan Weisselberg, one of his top lieutenants. That criminal investigation also involved efforts by the Trump organization and its staff to avoid paying taxes that were due. Seems like we have a pattern here. It will be interesting to see how that investigation proceeds. And last but certainly not least, we know about the fact that President Biden signed off on the release by the National Archives of documents from the Trump White House related to the January 6th insurrection at the Capitol. Those documents were being released to the congressional panel investigating the riot. Well, not surprisingly, before the National Archives could release those documents, Donald Trump sued. This appears to certainly be the action of an innocent man, because it makes you wonder, just what is he hiding? In addition to that, by the way, the January 6th commission has also voted to hold Steve Bannon in contempt of Congress, potentially facing criminal and civil liability for not showing up and testifying as he was ordered to under a congressional subpoena. What is the basis of their intransigence here? Well, there's a legal claim of executive privilege. Essentially what the idea is that the president should be able to get advice from his closest advisors regarding affairs of national importance without having to worry about the different ideas that are being discussed being later released to the public. This claim is especially interesting given the fact that at the time Steve Bannon wasn't working for the government. So it makes you wonder how a privilege to government employees would impact him. Well that's why judges get paid the big bucks. We should know that historically, though, it doesn't appear that Donald Trump has any kind of legal basis for his claims. We're all aware, of course, about what happened when Richard Nixon tried to use executive privilege recorded in the White House during the Watergate scandal private. That case went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court, where the Supreme Court held that those tapes had to be turned over. In essence, executive privilege cannot be used to shield someone from criminal liability. 
and it seems especially far-fetched that there would be some type of privilege attached to these communications, given the fact that there was no issue of national security involved. My guess is that if the courts act based upon the law and the facts, they will require the National Archives to turn over that evidence. But of course, with the way courts have become so political now, who knows what will actually happen. Finally, I'm just going to take a moment to speculate here because there was news about the former Brazilian president, Jair Bolsonaro. A report from Brazilian lawmakers found that he should be charged with mass homicide and genocide based upon his mishandling of the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, given how incompetently the Trump administration acted, behaving with willful blindness and allowing hundreds of thousands of Americans to die as a result of their inaction. I think it's not beyond the stretch of possibility that Donald Trump and some of his lieutenants could face similar legal action. I guess we'll have to see if the American justice system cares as much about the lives of Americans as the Brazilian justice system cares about the lives of Brazilians. Well, if you'd like to comment on this, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you could like this video and subscribe to this channel, that'd be a huge help. I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, let's hope for continued progress. Thank you.